Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Robin Denson, Chair of the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, here for our special meeting on Monday, July 19th at 4 o'clock p.m. Um, we will start with the attendance. And Lee, do you want to start? Lee Rodenberg, City Council. Tracy? Uh, I'm here. <laughs> And we have Mayor Kit Kuhn, we have City Administrator J Tony Pisecki, um, Public Works Director Jeff Langholm, and from Gordon Thomas Honeywell, we have Dale Learn, Josh Weiss, and Annika Vaughn. And our, um, oh, our Josh, I'm blanking on your title. This, I've got cold Interim medicine. City Clerk. <laughs> Thank you, City Clerk. Josh Decker, thank you so much. I thought I was gonna get through that okay. Thanks everybody for being here today. Um, we're gonna start with approval of minutes. So I have a motion to approve the minutes. I move we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next up is discussion items. And first up is an update on our 2021 interim plan. And Mr. Weiss, is this you? This is me. Um, Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. So uh, I think you have a hard copy of the, the draft interim plan that Annika and I put together for you. Um, this, we like to put something together as is our usual custom, just to sort of have in writing the things and items that we'll be working on for you when the legislature is not in session. This, um, because it is, uh, uh, it's July, it's not June <laughs> anymore. <laughs> when we put it together, it was June. Um, we've been engaging uh, on a number of these items already for you. Um, this is not, from my perspective, not super critical that we get you know every I dotted T crossed on this. This is intended to be a little bit of a living organic document because things will change over the interim. Um, for example, we put on here that we would track the Department of Revenue's tax structure work group meetings, and they haven't actually scheduled any for the summer yet. So we're not quite sure that that will happen in July, but whenever it does happen. The same thing with the legislator, legislature put together a task force again this year that Depart Department of Commerce is running um, on GMA reforms. They are just getting going on the RFP for a facilitator for that. So we don't really know when the meetings are going to start on that. I think that you know, the, the major things, um, well, the major item that is always on our agenda for the summer is making sure that we nail down and have a good legislative agenda put together for the start of the 22 session. I'm not sure, um, members, if you want to talk about that today, certainly we'd be happy to. It'd be a fine time to do it. Um, start thinking about items that we want to put on the session and what session might look like. Um, but mostly just in here, wanted to like I said, get in one document the things that are on our minds and see if there was anything from your perspective that we were missing and that you wanted to add. So I can answer questions, but that's kind of the, the brief overview. Uh, you're on mute, council member. I could just ask a general question. Are there, are there issues that other cities are really tuned into um, for the next legislative session that they're thinking about? Um, not particularly yet. Uh, people are still thinking about it. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things that are happening in, in big picture terms. We're still thinking that they probably will have a, well, they're still talking about potentially having a special session. They're looking now at November, um, those dates when we have Senate and House Committee Assembly the week of November 15th. That's what they're talking about now is, as having special session during we, you know, our transportation requests are really our big item that have been sort of we're waiting for. Um, I feel like we have done what we need to do at this point. They've been in both of the proposals to date. Um, we can continue to reach out to the delegation and let them know that, you know, this is still a priority, but I know that they're aware of that. Um, and I think our risk is if they come up with a smaller and Democrat only um, transportation package that we could potentially get left off. But then again, I'm really banking on Senator Randall, um, you know, being in the majority, being in a swing seat that they're gonna wanna make sure and give her some wins going into the election in, in 23. I, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. We've had the house members on site. I don't think we need to do that again. 
Um, but I think that's the one piece that we really at this point have in play and we probably should be doing as much as we can to talk about with policymakers over the next, you know, between now and November. Um, for 22, it's gonna be short session. All those bills are gonna come back. Um, they're gonna be swamped with ideas that they had been talking about last year. Um, I don't think you know, GMA bills are gonna be ready for this year. Um, since they're doing this, the task force, um, with the exception of maybe the GMA climate change bill that they considered last year. And I think that would be a pretty hard one for us to influence. Um, and then I, you know, the other thing that we've talked about before teen up in 22, I think we have a real opportunity. If we, um, we should talk about a capital budget request. There will be some capacity. Again, I think Senator Randall will be in a position to get something. Um, she prioritized other um, projects last round. Um, I think if we had a reasonable, you know, million, million and a half dollar request, I think she'd be in a position to get something. But I, I really want to make sure that it's a project that we know we can get done and, and that it's a priority and we all have sort of lined up. So I kind of went into a lot there. Um, you can dive into more detail on any of those, um, however you'd like. Well, in terms of capital projects, obviously the sports complex comes to mind. We've already asked for that once, so I don't know if that's a strong ask. The commercial fishing home port pier comes to mind. Um, Mayor Kuhn and Tracy and Lee, you might have some other ideas of things that are kind of near, near horizon projects. Yeah. Um... If would would our would our um, sports complex projects compete with our transportation projects? No, they're different budgets. Okay, all right. I, I guess I have a question, uh, Josh. Um, in in what time period would this ask expect to be? Uh, the project would have to be developed and and, and completed. We need to. We would need to spend the money by June 30 of 2023. Okay. Then my next question would be to Director Langhelm, and that is what does he see as something we could could complete in that time frame? given that we have so many. Councilman Say that again, you froze at the last bit of that, uh, Councilmember Rodenberg. Yeah. I would ask uh, Director Langhelm, uh, what does he see that we could get done within that time period, uh, given that we have other projects that uh, are in front of it and, and need to be completed as well. So no use asking and getting the money and, and wasting our goodwill if we can't truly make it happen. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. We have the sports complex slated for initiating design by the end of this year. Um, that will, however, though, that will take us, design and permitting will take us through all of 2022. And I doubt by the time we break ground in 2023 with the sports complex that the contract will actually be finished by June of 2023. Um, it will probably take till the end of 2023 for that at least phase 1B of the sports complex to be completed. Jeff, can't we spend the state's money first and get that all spent by June th uh, 30th? It depends on how the um, funding is allocated. Quite often it's a reimbursement uh, funding. So we would have to, and it would it'd be allocated across the entire construction project. So we need to spend a certain percentage of the, we just spend 100% of the money on the contractor and be reimbursed X percent from the state. So it would be across the entire construction project usually. Understood. J Josh, would um, projects that we put forth that are asking for design money uh, rank well, or are we really looking for something where we're building rather than just designing? Building's always better. Um, the state isn't as excited about design. Um, having said that, we have been successful. We have gotten design money before. Um, you know, it's more compelling when you have something at the end of the project. You know, they can see that you've built. 
One idea, and Mr. Langham, you'll have to let me know if the timing on this would work, is the culvert under Harborview Drive. How about that one? Uh, timing wise, again, for design and permitting that is, uh, I don't think construction on that project is going to occur until 2023 at the very soonest. I would anticipate, even if we started design next year, that that project would take at least two years to go through design and permitting. Um, I mean, I, depending on the dollar amount you want to look at, there are some projects, even one of them that the council uh, wanted to us to get completed this year is a Scansy net shed painting. The bids came in way above what we had available funds for. And that requires re-roofing, repainting, some, some minor structure repairs and resiting of our water, our, you know, our waterfront gem. Um, but it's that project will probably be in the few hundred thousand dollars to complete. Councilmember Rodenberg. Yeah, just to uh, re trying to reiterate my point, I think uh, probably the priority would be to instead of pulling something off our wish list, uh, probably some time should be spent in looking at uh, Jeff spending some time looking at what would fit that slot and let's see if that is close enough to the top of our priority list to move forward with. And I did have a comment on the Scancy net chat uh, in their in their bylaws or their, their goals. Uh, they talk about the preservation of the net shed themselves as a, as a society. Uh, do they pitch in? Do they, like the boat shop and the other uh, nonprofits, do they actually help pay for some of their painting and that kind of thing? Uh, it's very limited, similar to how the boat shop operates. Uh, they, they spend the first thousand dollars a year on maintenance and uh, then the rest comes from the city. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mayor Kuhn. Yeah, um, so uh, I have three, three topics, three items, but first thing, Jeff, um, I mean, the sports complex is, is uh, shovel ready, except for permits, um, you know, and more design work. I mean, it's close. So do you think that if we got a partial, we could, what was the time frame, Josh Weiss? Was it the end of 2023? June 30th, 2023. Do you think, um, do you think we could get that for, I, I'm not, I think your answer is no, but I just want to verify that. I, I think that would be pushing it too fast. I, I think it's going to take a year to get through the design and the permitting. Okay. So that would put us into construction spring of 2023. And there's there's no way that site would be constructed in a four month All time right. frame. The other thing is they may think that they've already done it, even though there's other funds. We, we got a $500,000 grant for the 1B and we actually have HBZ money. So um, uh, they may say, well, you've already received it. And then we got the money from the RCO that were given to the Y. Um, the net shed, just so the rest of the council know, I mean, we were gonna reject the bids. It was 170,000 was the low bid. The high bid was 248,000 to paint it. That's it, just to paint it. So that might be a really good project. The other thing is if we chose to, to save the Masonic Temple, um, being that in its ability, Jeff, um, you know, I mean, Bill Ackerman's was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's probably going to be a million and a half by the time we're done. Do you think that's possible? Uh, yes, it is possible. Again, that building is currently in under the jurisdiction of Pierce County. It's not in city limits. Um, I don't know the timing on their land use review, building permit review, but I, it, it is possible if we have to clear direction on what we want to do uh, to put together design, go through the permitting process, uh, as long as I mean, we don't have to do significant land use approvals to get additional parking for the building. Okay, so for the, for the three council members to consider would be the net shed and Masonic Temple. Okay, and Mr. Paisecki? I was going to bring up the Masonic Temple too. So, if I'm not mistaken, though, didn't we? We have to have the public outreach and all that in order to find out the visioning of the park, uh, and if if the Masonic Temple fits into that. So that throws some other things besides permitting uh, in the process. And something that have to be done uh, upfront sooner or better. But I think the permitting for that 
would probably be not as complex as the permitting for the uh, sports park. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Yeah. And, uh, John, and, and Mr. Weiss, didn't I, I thought the mayor asked if the sports complex came under the transportation budget, which is what we're talking about, and you said no. Is that correct? He, uh, the mayor had asked whether the, it would compete with the transportation projects, and it will not. This is in the capital, okay. and not the transportation. Oh, so, so compete. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I thought Council Member Rodenberg had a great idea that maybe Mr. Langhelm could take a little time before our next meeting and think about possible projects. And I'm sure Mayor Kuhn and Mr. Paisecki have you know some input on that. And you can come back to us if that's all right at the next meeting and, and give us some choices. Yeah, I think Jeff might even agree. We don't have a lot of, a, for them to be as ready as we are, I'm not sure if Jeff or I need more time, really, because there's, because they have to be, you know, like, like Josh, we said, they have to hopefully be a building. Um, we're already behind in a lot of things with COVID. They have to be quite ready. I mean, maybe Jeff knows more, but, but I don't, that would be, you know, ready. Well, I'd be happy to look at our, you know, tier three, tier four capital projects that we have, and also the twenty proposed twenty twenty two budget projects that we are that Public Works has already developed. Uh, again, most of those are carryovers, but there are some new ones in there. I'm, I'm there's there's some projects on there, of course, that we could look at that uh, are not glorious annual pavement maintenance, but. Um, it's something that's critical for us, but I'd be happy to put together that list based on looking at our tier three, tier four capital projects and the uh, 2022 budget projects. The hey, hey, street sidewalks, that would be considered transportation, right? Not capital. The phase two for 38th street. Uh, that be transportation? It kind of depends. We have gotten sidewalk funding before, but it's usually in a park context. Okay. Um, it kind of depends on how you're able to characterize it. You could also do safe routes for uh, safe routes to schools too. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, Councilmember Rodenberg. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but uh, the mayor was talking about getting together with Jeff, and I think maybe it would be appropriate to include Councilwoman Markley in those talks, since whether the project gets finished or not will actually be on her watch. Good so idea. I like to have a part in that. It's an idea. Before, suggestion. Before we move on from this topic, I just want to add, um, Councilmember Denson talked about culverts. So the state has been pretty resistant to funding individual local culverts. So I don't think that would be a competitive project, even though it would be beneficial to have funded. So uh, that's probably wouldn't compete well in the capital budget. Thank you, Annika. Yeah. One last question for Josh. Uh, when would the money be available for us if we were actually to uh, figure out a project that we could start building and have it done before June 30th? It usually takes, let's see, uh, May, June, July, August. Usually takes four to six months for them to get out. Again, to Jeff's point, for what we're talking about, it's reimbursement basis. Um, and it usually is four to six months after the session starts that you can really start tapping into it. So it would be, say, July, August, September of next year? Yeah, that seems about right. That might be a little early, okay. but yeah. Just something to keep in mind when it comes to the timing of the project. One thing about the net shed is um, it's ridiculously expensive. Oh, and if I, so by the time we do the roof and maybe maybe some minor structural, I mean, we're going to be probably $600,000. And it's very hard to think of paying for that ourselves because it's just out of, out of it's just, it blows you away. But, but it is, it is um, I mean, it's, it's unique to the Puget Sound area, very much so. So I can see this get a lot of support because a lot of cities don't have it. And the way we build it, the way that um, our lobbyists, you, you three, can build this, um, you know, we have so many net sheds, we want to preserve them, that we have to go under state and federal guidelines, way more severe being over water, and, and, and then how we're using it right now and how it's been used. 
I think you got a really uh, like a love case that you can build on something that's just very unique um, and would touch a lot of people's hearts. Yeah, the historic, the historic preservation aspect of that is very cool. And if the if the building can sit tight for upwards of another year, um, that might be a good project to put forward. Yeah, um, I, I agree, Mayor, with your characterization. I think that one's you know the kind of project that people can get excited about. You can envision a ribbon cutting down there with the community and, and legislators getting pictures and just having it play really nicely, right? Um, well, the I should have maybe said this in my intro, the broader context here, the 23 capital budget will be the next big capital budget, right? And there will be more opportunity. There's always more opportunity in the big budget. Having said that, what we're really seeing in the 26th district is there's a lot of competition for capital budget dollars. And essentially the legislators are kind of having jurisdictions take turns. Um, or at least I think we can argue that it's our turn now since another number of other jurisdictions have gotten funded before us. Um, the part of it, just keep in mind, the city of Port Orchard will have a large, another large capital budget request in 23. They're building a community center. So we are definitely gonna have competition down there. Um, I guess, I would really rather see you choose a really like your highest priority project that is going to be what you probably get for the next three, four years and make sure it's a really, you know, well put together. The park project was really well illustrated as well, um, but well supported, well documented, have a really solid plan for how implementation is going to happen and then have us implement it really well, spend the money and be able to really demonstrate that we use the dollars. To good source. So I, I guess my point is sort of quality over quantity. If we can do quality in 22, then I think we can definitely get some money. I shouldn't say definitely. I think it's our turn to get some money. In 23, we might run into some competition, though we still make the argument that it's our turn to get some money. Okay. So you mentioned how it was a really short session this fall and how there's really not going to be much available. So I think that's good to let everyone know that. Just kind of like you did, but even more so. It's going to be very short starting in January and they have all the bills from last year that they're going to, you know, number of which they're going to consider and try and push again. So I think it's going to be a very, um, I think it's going to be a really tight agenda starting in January. And then at Shed, there certainly is a sense of urgency around that. I mean, I don't think we can wait any more than another year, according to the folks using that building. So let's kind of keep that as our number one for now. But um, Mr. Langhelm, Mayor Kuhn, if you think of anything else that we're not thinking of in the meantime, they're like, oh yeah, we want to maximize. If it's our turn, we want to maximize what we're getting. Okay, next Absolutely. up to discuss is update on federal appropriation requests. Dale? Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, so we're about midway through the federal budget process. Um, we're approaching the August recess. We anticipate the House committee committees to be finished by the end of this month. Um, as typical, the Senate really hasn't started in, in, in any fashion. and haven't, haven't um, uh, released a bill uh, to date that's not alarm that's that's custom um they're also so typically we finish the budget in december so we're sort of in that slow process the house is is always a little more accelerated uh we were able to submit five projects on both sides of the hill um, thanks to jeff and particularly laura putting together a lot of the letters of support um, that was very, very helpful. Um, we'll see how we do at the house side. It'll probably be a lot tighter The each house member only were allowed to ask for 10 projects through the entire budget. Um, Senator, I'm sorry, Congressman Kilmer only asked for one municipal project of the, his 10. So if we are to be successful. It's likely on the Senate side. The Senate's much more flexible again, but takes quite a bit longer. Uh, that 
in parallel, the House, Senate, and the White House are trying to negotiate new infrastructure funding, both what they call human infrastructure on the social services side and hard infrastructure. One mentioned culverts, both Senator Cantwell on the Senate side and Congressman Kilmer were able to put a new program for, for culverts, federal culvert funding in their respective uh, surface transportation bills. So we'll see if that makes the final bill. That again will likely take quite a while. There's going to be a test vote in the Senate on Wednesday. Um, I also speak with um, Senator Murray's legislative director on Wednesday about the Senate budget process and uh, infrastructure process. So not a lot of updates just because we're halfway through this. I would say going into next year, if the city intends on whether we're successful or not in 2021, um, requesting funding from Congress again, uh, we'll, we'll likely have a lot more time to develop. Uh, this was a quick process because um, although many anticipated it would happen at some point, we didn't know it happened this year, they'd bring back earmarks for, for Congress. And we were given just a few weeks to put together what we did. And then um, we will have a chance to analyze what was and wasn't funded. And uh, likely in the February or March timeframe, should the, the city desire to try um, the process again for either additional projects or new ones, um, we'll have time to, to, to look at what was and was not funded. And, and I would suggest broadening our our effort into more fields, uh, looking at some of the house bills, they 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 really have have, have approached it in uh, um, providing funding or wanting to provide funding for for things involving nonprofits and sort of social services side more so than hard infrastructure. Um, so having some of those those types of requests would be helpful. So again, we'll have that that opportunity. Also, I would suggest um, getting both. Congressman Kilmer and at least senior staff or, or regional staff from the two senators' offices into the process of, de of development, helping us help develop said requests in 2022. Um, so there's just a few of the things, but again, we're halfway through it, um, considering December is kind of the, the terminus of this year's budget. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions. Council Member Markley. Um, yes, thank you. So Dale, when you're talking about, um, you know, in infrastructure for social services, what kind of things would that look like, you know, for the city of Gig Harbor? I mean, we don't really have mental health care facilities that the city operates or, you know, anything that we put city money into in terms of social services. It's usually more county resources. So what types of things would the, would, what would we as a city put in as a request for in that category? You know, it's interesting. It's, it's, a, good, it's a great question. Um, a lot of those are partnership types of uh, projects where you're helping a, a nonprofit or a, a, a say the YMCA, uh, working with them to get funding. Um, um, someone talked about the, the, the elements of the net was it the net shed or was it where there, there is a, a nonprofit or a group like that that works on part of that, working with them to, to get funding, may not come directly to the city per se. One thing that, you know, 10, 10, 10, 10 plus years ago that the Congress was very interested in funding was uh, uh, dollars for law enforcement and with sort of new approaches to law enforcement, we may see in the end a lot of community-based uh, policing uh, that they fund in this process. Um, just again, analyzing what they fund in the end. And again, we don't know until December where we're at um, with the condensed time frame. I feel, and in talking with people and, and I'll have more conversation with Ben Merkel um, on Wednesday from Senator Murray's office, um, what are the type of things they're looking at? How does that fit what we do? Now, again, traditional infrastructure like the sports facilities, and you know, road road projects aren't uh, um, they are they are and well fund those types of projects. I just think mixing having a mix of things. Um, I know it sounds like 
a, a very general answer to your question, but until we know what was and what was not funded, mm -hmm. I can't uh, offer a, a real answer. <laughs> Well, that, <laughs> but that what I'm saying is as we move into the fall and into the to the winter and then early part of 2022, analyzing that and then trying to look holistically at the types of things we work on or we can partner with uh, uh, people, we'll have time to do that. And, and, and I think we'll have a better uh, mix of projects we can offer the members of Congress. I hope that answers. I don't know if that even does. That's, that's just right now we don't know enough. I can throw you some examples. I can send you some, some examples for sure. That helps. I mean, I'm thinking of Fish Food Bank that's building their facility and still yeah. need another $2 million to reach their goal. I'm thinking of, you know, if the, if, if the YMCA, can, if, if we can help them fundraise for the sports complex, but helping them fundraise the money that they're, you know, kind of on the, I don't know if that's sneaky, but kind of on the back end of, I mean, they've got to do their fundraising anyway for the sports complex. If we can support a, a nonprofit community organization, that's also going to get that sports complex also going. Um, I don't know if you can double dip that way. I certainly wouldn't want to do that if that was not right. But, you know, I mean, there there are, now that you mentioned it, you know, the net shed and things like that, there are community community projects now that can come to mind where, we could put in a request to for them because it is going this is these projects will benefit our entire community as a whole all of yeah. them that i mentioned yeah. so yeah okay that's good to know and, and again i will have a full analysis you know of all this uh you know and at the end of the year um to, by to then, better inform all of us yeah. right what <laughs> will it be too late to ask at that point no, 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 no okay. absolutely not. I mean, again, we had two weeks to come to get to put together what we did, and thank you okay. for everyone that was involved. But we'll have two or three months, you know, once we Great. once things are final. I mean, we'll know a good sense because the the final bill really is put together in the November, October, no, really November, and then December is sort of debating what. You know what to do with its, the final version. We'll kind of have a good understanding of it in that time frame, and so we'll be begin to sort of see, okay, this is what they liked and what they didn't like, and 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 then going into, you know, the budget draw. This will be a normal year. This will be second year of this administration. They'll drop a budget in early February. Unlike, you know, this year they were two months off because it's a new administration. That'll be a normal process. The members will. Well, uh, time frame to you'll have a you know you'll have once the budget drops you'll have another month and a half to when those deadlines to submit will be so we'll have a lot more time and I, we, it'll have a lot more time to involve. I mean, we talked about involving our members and then reaching out to them and their staff. They were overwhelmed because again, they had a few weeks to sort of put all this, at least from the initial submission from from uh, requesting entities to put it all together. Um, so they didn't have time to sort of like bring them in the process to, to come look at things and stuff like that. So that's, those are just some of the things that I, I would suggest. Um, it, it'll look more normal and be, we'll have a lot more prep time and we'll have a better understanding of where we are. Great. Thank you. And Mayor Kuhn. Um, I'll have, uh, I think uh, Tony was ahead of me. Okay. So I'll have to go first. Thank you though. Sorry, I got lost track. Oh, that's fine. Not a problem. Um, Dale commented on projects that have partnerships, and Councilmember Markley mentioned the uh, food bank. So I would encourage us to think about those nonprofits that service the community, and are there projects that we know they are working on right now where they may need assistance, or even, quite frankly, something that we have always thought, gee, if they had um, a something, whatever it is, a uh, ability to do a service that we don't have or to improve one that they are currently doing and approach them and say, would you like to partner with us? Because we think it's important to the community and we're willing to spend some of our political capital in DC to try to get you what it is you need. So let's think about this and be try to be a little creative about it. Because if there's opportunity for this kind of money, uh, I think we should be working with the community to try to get some. <clears throat> Okay, Mayor Kuhn, and then yeah, I, I know this is um, it's like opening up a can of worms that everyone, every city has to deal with, and ours isn't as bad as as many cities, but mental health, and um, you know maybe 
Dale, you, I'm sure there's other cities that are, are dealing with this. And if we had an example of another city, you know, so this is also something really long-term for council and mayor uh, to think about. Um, you know, like we had a person today that's this morning that's, uh, you know, was on the bridge and she might've jumped and she didn't. We talked her down because we knew her, uh, the city, because she's a resident, but she's very unstable. We have someone else that's lived in the woods for 30 years and his family won't take him in. And so we actually have people that they keep going to Western State for one day if we can catch them and then they let them out. And um, this is just gonna grow. So even though we don't have what, if we have to compete against worse cities, well, we may not do it. But if we have a plan that we can, um, you know, a template that we can take for, from somewhere else, we spend a lot of our police officer staff time. And like you just said, Dale, I mean, there, when I've talked to police, um, you know, the reform's a bad word. What we really need is, and I talked to Kelly, and the police just not, they really shouldn't necessarily be dealing with mental health. There should be a different agency that deals with mental health. And another thing for us to consider down the road, I found out only about a year and a half ago that we all pay, every city pays a tax, a percentage of your sales tax goes to mental health. And ours goes to the county. But cities actually have the ability to take that tax and use it themselves in their own city. They don't have to give it to the state back to the state for for their mental health or the county, they can actually use their portion in their own city if they if they choose. But we but you know you have to develop a plan. But that is something for the future mayor and council to consider. We're paying a tax right now for mental health from the sales tax that goes to the state or the county. Some cities in, in Pierce County use that money themselves for their own mental health issues. So again, my point is if we use that money. If we developed a plan and we used and we we separated that money and we went out for help, um, it still takes a percentage of our time and it's just going to grow. So and it is different, like you said, Dale, and it's needed. Yeah. And I'm just the city of I have a friend who represents the city of Auburn. I We don't. But it, the city of Auburn has a consolidated um, program for that. Just I mean, I can get some information about it for sure. Yeah, yeah and I think that's what it's called. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councilmember Rodenberg, you had your hand up. Do you, you not want to speak now? No, I've changed my mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> Councilmember Markley. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with Mayor Kuhn. This is an issue that isn't going away. It's just going to get bigger. And you know, it there are there are people in Gig Harbor that would like to believe that we don't have any kind of problems like that here, and we don't have a homeless population and we don't have people that are literally like this close to homelessness and a lot of it is mental health related not all not not all um but a lot of it is i've had a boots on ground experience with this since november now last november dealing with people that are in this situation and um so if there is a plan as you know if there's something that another city has done that we can you help address this issue, it would be wise. It would be very wise before it really turns into a bigger problem than what the city's currently experiencing, because it is just going to go that way. You know, I was shocked to hear some statistics from Fish where the, the majority, ugh, maybe that's not the majority, but there's like 1200 families that they serve that are not homeless, they're, they're working people but they are this close, their, their income is so low, they are coming to get food so they can pay their light bill or their cable bill or their rent bill or whatever bill it is. They're, they're, they're needing services from fish in order to be able to just pay their regular bills and feed their family. So this is a lot bigger population, I think, than we realize. It's kind of the, the silent population that's just sort of out there paying their rent, living pay to pay, you know, paycheck to paycheck barely. And it's just one more pandemic away from, or, or our, another major issue, you know, away from a lot of these people not having a home. And so, you know, if we can 
if we can capitalize at all and use federal funds for these purposes to help these people in our community, then, then we need to do that. Um, and especially when it comes to the mental health tax, if we can channel those funds, if there's a nonprofit that is willing to take on that problem mm -hmm. and, and provide those services, they just need funding to do it. Well then, hey, let's, let's help them out. Thank you, Council Member Markley. And Mr. Weiss? Um, two things, I didn't, thank you. I didn't raise my hand originally for this, but the um, sales tax that you're referring to, um, Pierce County took that tax uh, vote, I think just this uh, spring, um, which foreclosed the opportunity for additional cities to take the tax. Uh, that was the issue. Pierce County cities were given the opportunity to take that tax again because the legislature was so frustrated that Pierce County wouldn't uh, impose the local tax. Um, but that is that window has closed for you now, unfortunately. But we have definitely worked with jurisdictions that have worked on a lot of times it's like supportive housing projects, which kind of are that intersection between housing and um, and uh, mental health. There's a lot of state money and there's a lot of state interest in funding those kinds of projects. So if that's something you, you know, that you find a partner for that you're interested in working on, we could definitely pursue that. I, my original hand went up because um, when Dale had mentioned more appetite for social services and sort of justice reform, there's you know the Blake decision at the state level and how that gets implemented at the city. If the city were interested in doing a diversion program at your district court, that is definitely the direction the state is going to be pushing you. They're mandating that right now. Um, we haven't had right now, the push is for cities broadly to be given resources to stand up those diversion programs, but maybe there would be a way to make a pitch for a specific program at a specific jurisdiction. And maybe I'm not sure, Dale, if there would be an intersection there for state and federal funding that we could make a pitch for. But that was yeah. sort of my stream of consciousness thought for you. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. And um, Representative or Representative Council Member Roanberry. Yeah, I. You're on mute. Yeah, OK. Uh, <clears throat> Just to be clear a little bit and make uh, council member Markley feel a little bit better, uh, the, the number you got from fish for 1200 people, that's a huge area. It's way out in the Kitsap and that kind of thing. So the concentrated problem is not necessarily in Gig Harbor. And even though statistics show that the number one reason for homelessness in overall sense is mental health, uh, Chief Busey has the figures that says that uh, in Gig Harbor, the number one reason for homelessness is not mental health, but loss of a job. So that is, and it's almost reversed. It's like, that's about 80% of it instead of uh, in other, for instance, in Seattle, 80% is mental health and drug abuse. So, and one more word about FISH. As you know, my wife's on that board of directors and has been there for uh, well over 22 years. Um, if the strings attached to federal money uh, are as stringent as they are with federal construction projects or road projects, uh, FISH may certainly want to take another look at that and decide whether that's really for them or not. As you know, they're a small organization and not they're getting more and more sophisticated every day, but not necessarily uh, in a position to be filling out a lot of reporting and that kind of more than they already do to the feds. So just a word. Thank you, Councilmember Rodenberg, Councilmember Markley. Yeah, just to go to Councilmember Rodenberg's point for a minute, um, I, we certainly wouldn't want to burden fish you know, or make their job harder. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what those federal strings could be, but you're right, they sh we would want to take a look at that. But um, what you were saying, Josh, about um, diversion programs, are, is that like um, what Associated Ministries, Catholic Communities and Services, is, is that like where they give assistance to get people in, they pay first month's rent and deposit, is, is that what you're talking about by a, a diversion program? Because I know diversion funds in one sense, but I want to make sure I'm that the term is right, the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, 
What I was thinking of is more what, what the law requires now is when people come in for a drug misdemeanor, which the new, you know, possession of drugs is now for hard drugs is now a misdemeanor for the first two times that they are arrested, they are required to be given treatment, diversion services, rather than going into jail. Oh, um, okay. So the, the municipalities, you all are now gonna have the impact of having to provide or at least connect people with services as opposed to being able to book them into the county jail. Okay. Yeah, so I, I like the idea of thinking about how we can provide some services that support our, our police officers and what they have to do. Cause I, Chief DC was talking about this the other day. This is what they have to do, but there's really nowhere to, to send these folks. They hand them a card. Can we provide? <laughs> something more so the police officers feel good that these folks are getting the help they need. The other thing I'll just throw out to keep in mind as we're thinking about this is the senior center, which we sorely need in this community. And that could be a collaborative project between Kick Harbor and the, and the county because we've got seniors to deliver. I'm just throwing it out there. We, there's no location identified <laughs> is the problem, but that might be something that would be appealing to funders as well. So I would just like to end and, and this is this is more long term uh, thinking, and this is in part for Jeff and for Josh and Annika that talked about the new infrastructure bill. I mean, the, we have the surface bill, which is expires at the end of September. It's the long policy bill for federal surface plan transportation. The House has passed their version. The Senate is negotiating with the, with the president on their version. The senators want to add this human infrastructure. The dollar amounts are often more double where we are currently. Now, a lot of those funds come through WashDOT, PSRC. If, if I do anticipate at least hard infrastructure will pass by the end of the year. Now, the, some of the human infrastructure, which which the, the Senate Democrats and, and Biden wanted the $3.5 trillion, that's a lot of money. I don't know what, how much of that will get in there, but I do anticipate we'll see surface transportation. They'll probably add water and sewer infrastructure, maybe even broadband um, to that, just to anticipate, you know, those dollars that come to the PSRC and Washout could see near doubling on the federal size with federal funding that comes to those programs. And then, as I said before, for Jeff's perspective, um, Senator Cantwell and, and Congressman Kilmer on the House side added this culvert program. Now, federalizing some of those projects may be a challenge, but we could see a if that is to survive this process through the year, again, the, the, those dollars would likely flow through Ecology or WashDOT or, or both, but that you could see some federal money um, for those sort of issues, thanks to their leadership. Just, just more long-term thinking about potential money that could come down to the city um, from this, this surface bill, as well as some of the add-ons that our members are pushing. Good point. Okay, wonderful. Well, there's a lot to think about and a lot to work on. And it sounds like there's some great opportunities coming up at the state and federal level this year and in upcoming years. Any other comments from my fellow council people? And Josh um, Stecker, when are we meeting next? And then I'll go to you, Council Member Markley. The next regular IGA meeting will be, let's see, it's gonna be the fourth, fourth Monday in September. So that'll be the 27th of September. Okay, and then I'll just ask Dale and Josh Weiss, is, is that okay? Do we need to meet sooner or can we kind of be firming up some of these decisions on at that meeting? Congress takes the whole month of August off, so. Okay. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they're not here in DC. They, they do a lot at home, but they, do, they don't do too much here. Okay, Council Member Markley. Uh, yeah, I just had one last question for Josh. So, um, you know, our police officers, our chief BC made us aware of a couple of bills that are going to impact our city greatly, impact police everywhere. Do you know if those bills are going to be looked at again to possibly be maybe reversed or re or revised to not be so hard on our, or are they just like a done deal for now? I think you know it depends a little bit on what you, which ones you're referring to. I don't I don't anticipate it getting any easier anytime soon. Um, okay. she, she's thinking about the Blake decision is what she's talking about. Yeah, yeah, 1054 and 1310. 
Yeah, so uh, no, I don't think the policy will be revisited in a major way. The Blake bill um, went into effect until, Anna can correct me if this is wrong, I think it was only through 2023. Um, so they will be revisiting that policy in a longer period of time, but I don't think short term, I think the short term question is really going to be around funding on Blake. Um, okay. There's, sorry, I know this isn't what you're asking about, but the one police reform bill that we are really worried about for this next session has to do with liability. Mm -hmm. um, we beat that bill back last year at the municipal level, but I think it'll be coming back and getting pushed again. Is that the um, 1202? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Councilmember Denson, I do think it would be to your question. I do think it, on the state side that we should be having some conversations in between now and September about trying to true up um, particular capital if we're going to have a request and, you know, making sure that when we come back in September, maybe we have a, a draft agenda for next session. Okay, so do you think we need to meet? before the September 27th meeting to firm that up? And you're talking about having the legislative agenda drafted. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we were able to do it with just, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, if I, if Annick and I worked with staff um, and then, you know, enough conversations with the, the four of you um, that we felt like what we were bringing back to that September meeting was, you know, had some truth to it, and then we were just fine tuning it. Okay. Because I mean, I'm that's I'm throwing that out. We could meet this committee. You could meet in August if you would prefer. And typically, we have the council approve our legislative agenda in November. Right. Okay. So I'm comfortable with the September 27th day, and I think that um the mayor and staff are familiar with with issues the council's concerned about. There's certainly Council Member Rodenberg and Markley, if there's specific things that you want them to be considering for the legislative agenda, feel free to just email Josh and Dale, if that's okay with you guys. And I'll do the same, okay? Sounds good. Perfect. Anything else? So Josh, if we wanna work on the, um, any of the things we've talked about, like the net shed or anything, um, do we need to do work between now and then? Between now and September 27th? Because I, I think we need to know um, what you need of us. If we've identified some things, what you need, and you don't have to do it now, but I think we need to know that. Yeah, I don't think it's that hard. Um, and if, it, if you want to have a more detailed conversation, we don't need to do it right now. I just think we need to know, um, you know, rough dollar amount, that you can get the money spent by June 30th, 2023. And, um, you know, some, some sense of certainty from you that the project is ready to go. I think we can, uh, Mayor, between you and me and Jeff, we can work on a few ideas. We can get those back to Josh and Annika for them to give us their thoughts on it. And if we need to have a special meeting of the committee to uh, firm that up a bit, say in late August, early September, may not be a bad idea. Okay. Okay. And, and Tony, sorry, council member, Tony, we would be happy, Anna and I would be happy to meet with the three of you or a couple of you to, to help as you think through and are brainstorming that too. We appreciate that. Would that have to come before the full council after we decide, or is that something this committee can decide and go Get put you know send it to you and get that on there just wondering what 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 is is this has to follow the same process that a lot of things follow you know other things follow do because i'm looking at the council meetings between now and september 27th and we're missing we're having our last council meeting in august not we're not having a, our last council so we only have one in august and then we would have one in september and then maybe two and then we'd have to have i mean your deadline is the 27th so if it does have to come before full council, we'd have to kind of get a jump on it. You you are correct. And let's just see how this uh, plays itself out over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but if we find traction on a particular project, uh, we will move forward quickly with the uh, 
the committee and then eventually correct me if I'm wrong there, but the full council needs to weigh in and say, yes, we want to put that forward. And if we, there is a chance that we might, instead of having a second council meeting, there might be one or two small things that we need councils okay, that we would get their okay in a, in a study session uh, between the first council meeting and when we would normally have a council meeting. So we could always do it at that time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, if we need to meet, then just let us know. We can do that. All right. Thank you, everybody. And can I get a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all Thank you. you. Thank you, Dale, Josh. Thank